is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2022 kia stinger gt courtesy of fred beans kia in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i am quite excited to be in this one of course it's a freaking stinger what do you expect several nice changes for the 2022 model year though including exterior upgrades new colors new tech as well and of course with the stinger you do have kia's best warranty in america being five years 60,000 mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100,000 miles on the powertrain and so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all of that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will be two different configurations for the 2022 stinger gt first one is the gt1 starting at forty three thousand six hundred and ninety dollars and then the gt2 which is the one we have today starting at fifty one thousand two hundred and ninety dollars but that was both pricing for the rear wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive to either of those simply add twenty two hundred dollars to either of those prices but regardless of which setup that you go with the power plant on the stinger gt is going to be the the same powering this beast is a 3.3 liter twin turbo v6 which by the way puts out an extra three horsepower from the previous 2021 model year i will have you know 368 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 376 pound feet of torque coming in at 1300 rpm power again sent to rear wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here but this one does also come with launch control as well so if you were to take this thing to the drag strip you do have that which is a beautiful thing and overall zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 4.7 seconds top speed 167 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 18 in the city 25 on the highway for the rear wheel drive 17 city 24 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking premium unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in our stinger i did want to mention the drive modes so there is a circular dial located just behind the shifter that will give you drive modes including sport comfort eco smart and custom adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity suspension settings all-wheel drive system engagement if you go with the all-wheel drive model of course and active engine sound then as well which essentially is where the sound is artificially pumped into the cabin but still it's pretty cool nonetheless but now having rambled all of that off to you guys what do you guys say Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put this thing here to the test. Let's test out the paddle shifters here first, and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, so we are in first gear here in three, two, one. Holy cow. They're quick. <laughs> I don't know why I was surprised, but they are quick. They are dang quick, and they have a high quality feel to them as well. They're definitely not black plastic like I had on my old Mustang GT. These are dang quick paddle shifters. I 100% did not expect that. Again, I don't know why this is a stinger, but very quick paddle shifters. Definitely not going to be disappointed when you use them here in this vehicle. So I'm a fan. To give back full control to the steering when it comes to shifting, just slide the shifter back one more time, putting it in drive yet again, and that is going to give back full control. And having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find yet another straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. Ah, good a spot as any in three, two, one from a standstill and go. Oh, there it is, baby. <laughs> good grief. In 60. <laughs> that was crazy. Oh, dang, I love this car. The twin turbo V6 that Hyundai, that Genesis, that Kia uses is absolutely ridiculous it instantly puts the power to the ground and when i say that i mean this all-wheel drive system is brilliant there was no spinning there whatsoever which makes for an absolutely ridiculous acceleration in the stinger gt that was freaking awesome i loved it anyways to go along with that awesome acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs but if you were to go with the gt2 trim level only you will get brembo front rotors or brembo brake setup in the front there in the back 13.4 inch ventilated rear discs as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes it comes in at 113 feet as far as the braking feel goes since we're coming up to a red light instantly brings you to a stop very firm bite there 
definitely not a soft braking feel. So I absolutely love that. It is right on point for the Stinger GT without a doubt. But anyways, touching then on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. And if you were to go with the rear wheel drive configuration, you're also going to get a limited slip differential sending torque to the rear wheel with the most traction. So that's always good. And high performance dampers actually do come standard on both trim levels of the GT as well here. So all in all, when it comes to ride quality, you do feel a little bit more of the road, but quite honestly, it's not that bad for what this car is. It is a decently smooth ride quality for this being a sports sedan. A lot of times you will not find that in sports sedans. So ride quality for that reason, in my opinion, is perfectly fine. Then when it comes to the steering feel, I did just put it yet again in sport mode and it is a much heavier weight to the steering feel when you do that. So I do appreciate that. Probably the best steering feel, quite honestly, that Kia and Hyundai put out right now. It's definitely a heavier weight to it. I really like the steering feel, at least in the sport driving mode. And again, when you take it out of that sport driving mode, it's gonna loosen up a little bit, but I love it in that sport driving mode. And again, there is a custom driving mode if you just wanted that heavier steering feel, but not the absolutely craziest acceleration at all times. So I do like that that custom driving mode is there for that reason. But again, steering feel is absolutely fine. As far as cabin noise goes, it is perfectly fine. I do have this sport mode, so you can hear a little bit of the engine sound being pumped into the cabin, which I do kind of like, to be quite honest. Acoustic laminated front windshield does come standard on this one, along with acoustic laminated front door glass as well, which makes for a very serene cabin cabin actually with the exception of that engine noise being pumped into it right now but anyways definitely very good when it comes to cabin noise as well as far as visibility goes it's 50 50 i mean it's not bad it's something that you get used to if you ever ask a camaro owner or a 370z owner what they think of their rear visibility they'll say it's perfectly fine although it kind of sucks if you're just buying it for the first time again it's something that you get used to although this visibility is not as bad as those two but it's certainly not the best just because of that fastback style design towards the back of the stinger so i will say that you'll get used to it don't worry about it continuing along the lines of visibility though rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the stinger gt and you will find a heads up display with the gt2 trim level that we have today so right now i'm currently looking at my current speed along with the speed limit and some safety features as well so that is always going to assist with visibility as well there so that is about it for the performance segment of this review though you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 kia stinger gt all right so here she is you guys the new 2022 kia stinger gt finished in panthera metal in case anybody was curious of our exterior color name and by the way there is a new color for the 2022 stinger gt and that is going to be ascot green which is probably now my new favorite color for the stinger it's kind of like a british racing green looks absolutely amazing you guys probably know i'm a big fan of green cars having owned that bright green mustang gt you guys may have seen already but anyways let's now go ahead and start up front on the stinger gt here gt specific front grill when you're comparing it to the non-GT trim levels I should say with dark chrome trim of course to the bottom corners there you will find front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics there also if you guys are curious about where the front camera is or where the front adaptive cruise control sensor is it is integrated into that front grill you guys could probably see it there now that i'm close up but it actually hides itself quite well kia did a very good job of hiding that and integrating it into the front grill i will say that and of course just above that you have the brand new kia logo which definitely looks very good sitting on top of the hood there of the stinger then to the sides led headlights do come standard on this one of course with the automatic feature as well meaning when it starts to get dark in at night those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there high beam assist actually also coming standard for both trims essentially what that is is when you turn your high beams on at night and it senses a car coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them to low beams so you don't blind the person and then when that vehicle is gone it's going to put it back up to high beams for you so definitely a big fan of that feature of course led daytime running lights it's also coming standard but a very menacing looking front end especially with that dark chrome it definitely looks good but last thing i wanted to mention in the front before we go ahead and make our way to the side if you guys were curious if these front hood vents are actually functional they actually are not believe it or not but looks dang good nonetheless so i did want to mention that to you guys so nice accent pieces on the hood there but that about rounds out the front of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the stinger but so now making our way to the side of the stinger here dark chrome upper window trim does come standard when it comes to the side mirrors they are 
are power adjustable black chrome side mirrors and they will be heated with LED integrated turn signals then as well. Body color door handles do come standard as well. One of the best accents in my personal opinion, there is some dark chrome located on the bottom portion there of the front fender and that actually is functional. It does provide a path directing the air around the side of the Stinger here. So definitely a big fan of that. And then taking a look down at the wheel configuration, 19 inch Spire alloy wheels do come standard on this one. And that is what you guys are looking at. It looks pretty good. And again, I am a big fan of the sport back styling of the Stinger GT because it adds practicality where let's say the Genesis G70 does not. It gives it a little bit extra cargo space if you were going with the Stinger GT. So I wanted to mention that. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. It's open now since we are around back. Of course, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top there. LED tail lights, which actually wrap around the side of the Stinger. You guys could probably see that. Maybe you saw it on the side profile. You do have horizontal Stinger badging going across the back end there, along with GT badging and all wheel drive badging as well. Then make your way all the way to the bottom. You will find a gloss black rear diffuser with absolutely massive dual exhaust outlets with quad chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here is that exhaust clip. But now since we are around back of the stinger when it comes to opening that rear hatch there is a button on the key fob that is one way there is also a button on the hatch itself and it is a power hatch actually so it'll actually just completely open up itself so that is pretty cool but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 23.3 cubic feet if that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it and to my surprise it actually has led cargo lighting in the back there i usually find halogen cargo cargo lighting so I thought that was pretty cool also some in-floor storage just a little bit of it and there actually is a spare tire located within the cargo floor that is how you're going to go ahead and access that if you needed it but anyways there's also some tie down anchors back there as well I should mention but pretty good bit of space since we do have the sport back design but then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 36.4 inches so for reference I mean even six feet tall this is how much space I have back there rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard back there along with rear ventilation for those rear passengers as well there are some front seat back map pockets and there are actually heated rear seats for the rear passengers as well if you were to go with the gt2 that we have today and so typically the next question is at least for this particular configuration where's the heated seat buttons because usually they're located right around the rear air vents but they're actually just in front of the window buttons on the actual doors in the back there in case anybody was curious so that's going to be how you're going to go ahead and turn those rear heated seats on but also there is a single usb charging port and a 12 volt power outlet back there then as well so pretty much everything you could possibly want in the rear seats but then making our way up to the front seats 12-way power adjustable driver seat for the gt1 and that does come with four-way power lumbar and an eight-way power adjustable passenger seat then as well so that is pretty cool 16-way power adjustable driver's seat for the gtt with four-way power lumbar two-way power side bolster adjustments that's awesome you usually find that on bmw and mercedes cushion thigh extension as well and a 12-way power adjustable passenger seat then if you were to go with the gt2 again you will get memory settings you will also get ventilated front seats but heated front seats will come standard on both trim levels if you wanted that leather seating is going to come with the gt1 and napa leather seating then coming with the gt2 but one of the things I actually put on my TikTok, if you guys want to follow me, it's at Gold Pony, is these are some of the most comfortable seats I've sat in in quite a while. And maybe it's because the power side bolsters or the cushion thigh extensions, but these are some seriously comfortable seats without a doubt. Can easily see myself taking a long road trip in the Stinger GT for sure. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped and it actually has the GT logo on the bottom and it is a flat bottom steering wheel 
as well, which I find is pretty cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. Do you have Kia's new logo on the one side of the key? Absolutely nothing on the other side because all your buttons are actually located on the side of the key. You have lock, unlock, that button to pop through your hatch, and then the circular button that says hold just above the Kia logo, that is going to be remote start, which does come standard on this one along with the push button start as well. So therefore, all I'm actually going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so upon startup, this gauge cluster is going to differ slightly. There's going to be a 4.2 inch digital readout for the GT1, 7 inches for the GT2. And so you got your tachometer all the way to your left, speedometer is all the way to your right. The digital portion obviously is going to be front and center. To control what is on that digital portion, there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel. The one that looks like two pages is going to adjust plenty of different things, including safety safety features. There's a digital speedometer you can display up there if you wanted to. That's probably what I would leave it on. There's some performance statistics, which is pretty cool. How many miles you have left until you hit empty. Outside temperature, the list goes on. Pretty much everything you could possibly want up within the digital portion of the gauges there. But then let's now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A power sunroof is going to come standard on both trims. It's a pretty wide sunroof, actually. It's larger than your typical sunroof that you might expect. Auto dimming rear view mirror is going to come standard on both trim levels. However, if you go with the GT2, you will get home light controls for up to three different garage doors. So did want to mention that LED interior lighting coming with both trims, multicolor ambient lighting coming with both trim levels as well. You got to love that aluminum trim accents coming with both trims, aluminum door scuff plates. I thought was pretty cool. That comes with both trims as well. Overall, this is finished amazingly quite honest i love the stitching within the doors i like the design to the stitching as well i love that we have this red leather interior here today that makes it look so dang good it's a nice contrast with the black leather that you can find pretty much everywhere this nice soft touch black leather within this three circular air vents that kind of look like fighter style air vents which i thought was pretty cool that's located in the middle obviously there's nice aluminum trim accent running just above the passenger side glove box along with some of the buttons below the air vents there just in front of the cup holders you will find a 12 volt power outlet phone charging port and a wireless phone charging area then as well just behind that you have a nice leather wrapped shifter which i'm a big fan of and i just emphasize the shifter because the gt1 uses a different shifter i believe still than the gt2 and i do like the gt2 shifter better just behind that you have an electromechanical parking brake you got your dual cup holders just beside that just behind all of that you actually have your ventilated and heated seat buttons in case you were curious where that was along with your heated steering wheel button actually as well it's not located on the steering wheel it's just in between all of those heated seat buttons there and just behind that a little bit of storage and then within the center armrest you have even more storage with a small little tray towards the top portion of that so overall interior quality is pretty darn great if i'm being honest so it is to be expected at a vehicle of this price range so kia definitely killed it with the interior quality on the stinger without a doubt but let's now go ahead and take a look at the tech display 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display does come standard bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that android auto apple carplay as well you do actually get factory navigation system although you don't really need it these days as long as you have a smartphone because android auto apple carplay climate control settings you can check out up there as well there is actually a voice memo system in addition to that if you wanted to record your voice and then play it back at a later date that is pretty cool and i like the coloration the kind of the blue and violet coloration to all these different apps up on this infotainment screen too it looks pretty darn cool of course you have sounds of nature which i absolutely love and that gives you different sounds of nature like lively forest calm sea waves Waves, rainy day, open air cafe, warm fireplace, and snowy village as well. So having said that, I think I'm going to pause here for a second, just let you guys listen to these sounds of nature real quick, and I will be right back. And so, of course, in addition to that, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them, dependent upon which trim level that you go with. Nine speakers is going to come with the GT1. And then there is a 15-speaker Harman Kardon sound system for the GT2 with 720 watts. So, of course, we do have the Harman Kardon here today. So, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Yeah. 
Clarity was 100% on point. Bass was ridiculous. That is a brilliant sound system for this Stinger GT without a doubt. Definitely a huge fan of the Harman Kardon sound system here. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this one in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera come standard for both trim levels. But if you were to go with the GT2, you will also find a surround view monitor. That's gonna be the screen to the right there, letting you know what is completely around the Stinger, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS top safety pick, which pretty much says it all right there. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard along with the driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard across the board will include a blind spot collision avoidance assist system, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, safe exit assist, driver attention warning system, forward collision warning, forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, lane following assist, and adaptive cruise control with stop and go as well. That is a ton that comes standard across the board. Probably part of the reason they got IHS top safety pick. But anyways, nonetheless. And so in the end, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the new 2022 Stinger GT, Ascot Green by far is my favorite color on the Stinger. That is a wonderful new addition for the 2022 model year specifically. Great safety on this one. IIHS, like I said, pretty much says it all right there. So you can actually have kids and own a fun car at the same time because the acceleration is absolutely amazing on this thing as to be expected with a twin turbo V6, of course. Braking is equally good. This thing stops on a dime thanks to the Brembo brake setup that it has, so that is wonderful. Great space on this one as far as cargo space of rear legroom for as quick as this thing is, so definitely a fan of that as well. And another thing, since I live here in PA, although it's quite hot today, we do get snow quite a bit come winter time and even fall a little bit, so the all-wheel drive system on this is definitely gonna come in handy, so I love that as well. The only constructive criticism that I can think of with the Stinger GT is really the rear visit visibility but really there's nothing you can do about that quite honestly and again it's something that you get used to so if you were to compare this to maybe some other quick sedans some other sports sedans you might get better visibility but again it's something that you're going to get used to as every Camaro and 370z owner will tell you as well so overall not a big deal to me but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on TikTok at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see short clips of these vehicles before they actually get to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe to the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.